G'day team, it is Jeb here and I am back for another episode of Adventure Ready with Adelaide RV and today, after the request of you guys last week, I'm gonna run you through all the things you should check before you leave on a trip. So last week we went through the pack down, how to store your van, and we've had a few of you reach out and say, that's awesome Jeb, but can you please share with us what you do before you go on a big trip? So follow me and I'll run you through a few things that I always check before I head away on the next adventure. Okay, so here I am, I'm sitting inside of this beautiful caravan. I'm just reminiscing the last trip that we done up the East Coast and it was absolutely beautiful. And what were a few of the things that I done before we left on that trip? Number one, I was actually having a look back through the previous trips that we had done to see how far we had traveled. So before we, before we went, this trip was gonna be about four or 5,000 kilometers. Now that's a fair old hike when you're going away for five weeks. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to run over my service schedule. So one of the first things that I do before I leave is I map out where is it that we're gonna be going, roughly how far is it, and how many kilometers am I going to travel with the caravan? I then look back how far is the last couple of trips and when was the last time that I had my caravan serviced? Guys, if you're going to drop over eight to 10,000 kilometers, it is really important that you try and get your caravan serviced, especially for your wheel bearings and your brakes. At the end of the day, those are the items that are gonna stop you in your tracks if something goes wrong. So the very first thing that I do before I leave is I just cast my memory bank back to how far have I traveled and do I need to service my wheel bearings and brakes. If they're all good, let's go through to a few little pointers about what we turn on and what we check before we leave. Okay, so step number one, we're taking our caravan out of storage, we're about to hit the open road, we wanna make sure we come up here to our trusty Red Arc system and take it out of its storage mode. So again, I went through in the last video about putting it into the storage mode, now we're gonna be taking it out of a storage mode. So as we see here in system settings, system mode, we're in storage, if we hit the across button, we go to touring. Don't forget that big green button up the right hand side. We tick that, it says, do you wanna save this settings into touring mode? We tick yes. Okay, so now we are set into touring mode, all inputs, outputs, loads, it's all gonna be allowed now because we are in the touring mode. What I also then do is I have a look at the capacity of the battery, so I can see here they're down to 25%. So what I would then do is I would go and grab my 240 volt power lead, again it's a 15 amp power lead, and I would plug it into the outside of the caravan just to give these batteries a little top up for a couple of days before we hit the road. And for those of you that have a van that's a few years old, you know, maybe you're in your first van or you're just starting out and you're in an older van, if you do have a battery management system or an onboard battery, you will have a battery system similar to this. It may not have the technology of these newer vans, but at the end of the day, the main thing that you need to do is plug your 240 volt power in and then make sure your battery charger, wherever that's located, whether it's under the bed or in the front boot, make sure that that is turned on. A battery charger is gonna take 240 volt, put it into 12 volt and charge your batteries. And that at the end of the day is all we're looking to do. Yes, this new technology is great, but regardless what sort of van you've got, you're gonna be able to charge your batteries up through whatever means possible inside of that particular van. And most of the time, if we're plugging that 240 volt power lead in and making sure our battery management system is on, that's going to do the trick. Okay, so as I went through in the last video, I always drain most of the water out of my tank so I can fill it up with fresh water every single time. So this is what we would do. Come out, take your little water caps off. Again, I stress I'm in a display van, so I haven't got a hose here, but you guys know exactly how to do that. Take your caps off and fill each of your water tanks here individually. When the tank is full, it will overflow out of here. Just make sure when you've drained your tank, that if you've left your valve on underneath, make sure that's nice and tight. Now you'll see that because as it starts to fill water, you'll have water coming underneath from the outside of the tank if that valve's uh, not closed. So just a little tip there, make sure that the valve on the tank is closed again. Fill your water tanks up with nice, fresh drinking water. And I always recommend that we use a food grade hose, okay? So if not just a green old garden hose, get either your blue or your white food grade hose. We find that that is much better um, for putting the water in. You don't get that kind of rubbery uh, smell. Now up here on your grey water tank, um, before we drained it out on the last video, before we stored it, and then we closed it back over again, just make sure that before you leave that this is nice and closed as well. You don't want 
road grime or you don't want the chance of anything going up inside the tank when you're traveling. So make sure before you leave, just in case you didn't do it when you stored it, make sure that that valve is turned off before you travel. And then again, when you get to your destination and you set up and you got your hose in there, you then want to turn that on to allow the water to come straight out if you're inside of a caravan park. If you're free camping, leave the valve turned off uh, and that'll just catch the water inside of the grey water tank. Alrighty guys, so we're back inside of the caravan now. We've filled our water tanks, we've got power plugged in. We just want to make sure that our pump is going to run and pump water through the water tanks, through the lines and out of all of our fittings. Before we do this, I always like to test the hot water system as well. So we'll turn the gas bottles on, on the front, we'll jump back inside and we'll just make sure the hot water system works here as well through our taps. Okay, so if you followed along on our storage video last week, you would have seen that I mentioned that I always fill up my gas bottles before I go. So I know that when I'm at this stage of testing my hot water system, the chances are the gas bottles are gonna be full. So what I'm gonna do is just crank that gas bottle on, turn that manual changeover valve over so it's facing the right bottle, jump back in and let's light this hot water system. Okay, so hot water system is on and heating. Now it's time to make sure that we got water running through all of our fittings. So again, guys, I just wanna stress, I am inside of the dealership, inside of one of our display caravans. So unfortunately, I'm not in my van, I'm not out and about for this particular video. So I'm not going to have running water here, but play along with me. So what we wanna be doing, uh, like the hot water system, we've let it run for a little bit. We know our pump switch is on. We know we've already filled the tanks because we've done that part. We're then gonna just go through and we're gonna flick over on any of our uh, mixers and just make sure that we have good pressure coming through and that water is getting hot. Again, disclaimer, we're inside of a display van, so we've just got a little bit of test water that's coming out of here at the moment. There's no gas in those gas bottles either, but you guys get exactly where I'm going with this. So gas bottles on, check the hot water system and just make sure that water is hot before you leave because if there's anything that you need to have looked at or any maintenance that you may need it's always better to get it done before you head away than when you're out at destination you've just pulled up at Claire it's one degree outside and you want a nice hot shower and the hot water system just won't light again we could have prevented that had we have done these few little checkpoints before we leave Alrighty guys, if you have a three-way fridge inside of your caravan, that meaning it is 240, 12 volt and gas, chances are it's going to take a little bit to cool down. So I always like to either a night before, a day before, two days before it is possible to jump inside of the caravan and just turn the fridge on. So again, depending on what sort of fridge you've got, they're all going to be different. But this particular one here, the big silver button in the middle, we turn that on, we change over our thermostat and we make sure, I've already got the power plugged in on the outside of the van, so it's going to default to 240 volt. So that's gonna be its best source. Cool the fridge right down before you fill it up full of food. All right, so the colder you can get the fridge, especially in the summer months, the colder you can get the fridge before you bring everything out and load it up, the better. We, you know before we pack the van down, we've already cleaned the fridge out, we've already had it aerated, so the fridge is gonna be good to go. Just shut the doors over, put the little latch away. So again, if you're finding your fridge and that little latch is out like so, okay, just fold that back around, lock the door up, Make sure it gets a nice good seal, turn it on, crank it to full temperature, and just leave it cool right down for a couple of days. So I mentioned before a few ideas when it comes to preventing flat spots on your caravan tires. One of the things that I said that I do is I actually pump the tires up to the maximum PSI allowable on the tire to help prevent any of those flat spots. So it's really important that you don't forget that. Before you travel, you wanna make sure that you check your tire pressures, and in my instance, let them back down a little bit. I run at 45 PSI in my tires. Again, a lot of the vans, if you're going more road and they're bigger 16 inch wheels, they could be even up to 50 PSI. But again, make sure you know the uh, what PSI the tire should be, what tire pressure the tire should be based on where you're going and make sure that you check that they are up to scratch before you leave. It's also really important that you get yourself a torque wrench. I use a torque wrench um, with the right size socket and just go right the way around and make sure all your wheel nuts are nice and tight before you drive off. And it's not just the tires that are on the ground at the moment that you need to make sure are up to scratch. Also ensure that you check your spare. So there's so many people that have the beautiful tire covers over the top of their spare and never take the tire cover off to make sure the tire is in good condition underneath it. And as you can imagine, it's only when you get yourself in a situation that one in a hundred time that you actually do need it, that you find out that it's not, it's either not pumped up or that it's damaged or something like that. So just rip the tire cover off. 
I know it can be a little bit of a pain and check the PSI of the spare wheel before you head out as well because in the event that you do get a flat, you wanna make sure that this is ready and raring to go so you can change it nice and quickly. Okay, so last but not least, we're hooking on, we're about to leave, we're about to go to destination. Make sure you plug in both your 12 pin plug and your Anderson plug. If you have a reversing camera, plug that in as well. One of you go to the back of the van, one of the stay inside the vehicle and make sure we check our indicators, both left and right, our uh, brake lights and our tail lights. Now just remember when you have your tail lights on, that also has your clearance lights here at the front and on the side of the caravan. So just do a full walk around and make sure that everything is working. We don't want to have had a pin or something go perish or, or, or out of whack during storage. Uh, and then you hit the open road and your right hand indicator, for example, isn't working. That's gonna cause all sorts of grief and all sorts of concern when you hit the open road. So make sure that you uh, plug, the, plug the caravan into the back of the car. Don't just hit the road, go to the back and check all of your lights before you hit the track. So there we go, Rob. I really hope that that has answered a few of your questions about what I do before we hit the open road. Mate, I really wish I wasn't here in the dealership and I was heading out and doing it inside of my van. But guys, there's some little tips and tricks following on from our storage video about what I check before we leave on a big trip. So just in recap, we're making sure our tire pressures are up to scratch. We're making sure our wheel nuts are done up. We're checking our indicators. We're going through, we're checking all the appliances on the inside of the van and making sure that they all work. Basically anything that can inconvenience you when you get to camp, I prefer to check here when you're inside of a larger town or a more metro area, potentially where you live. We're here in Adelaide. So making sure that anything that I need to get done, if something's not quite right, I can do it here before I get out on, uh, on the road and into some more rural places where chances are I won't be able to get any help. And don't forget, always keep a track of that servicing as well. And if you do need to get your caravan service, if you have gone over what we say as far as kilometers are concerned, make sure you book it in and get a service done. It's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to that sort of thing with preventative maintenance. Guys, there we have it. There's a little video that come from a request from Rob. Thanks so much, mate, for sending that via our website, adelaiderv.com.au. Guys, you can contact us and request any time that we shoot something for you. But guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you some tips and tricks for whatever van that you're in for what you can do before you hit the open road. For any other suggestions, guys, reach out, let us know. Pop a comment in below. Tell us what your items are that you check before you travel. We always love hearing from you guys. As always, we're here to keep you adventure ready, guys, and we are an open book. So anything you would like to share, please share it with us. Share this video with your family and friends and get the caravanning and camping lifestyle out to more and more people. Over and out, guys. Stay adventure ready.